Good morning, everybody. Hearty welcome to this uh, series of uh, lectures on the book of Revelation. And we go uh, verse by verse through the book. And again, it's an important uh, theme and subject because many people in these uh, days of Corona and lockdowns and governments um, coming down on the liberties of the people think that we are in the tribulation or the great tribulation. Uh, or the last days have come in the sense of the last days of uh, this earth. Both are not true and we're gonna try to explain that according to a verse-by-verse -verse explanation of uh, the book of Revelation and uh, I hope you take the time to go through the reference and pray over that. If you're not saved uh, there is no hope for you in this world. You're gonna die one day, you're gonna go to hell and you burn forever once you die without Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, that's to start off with. Now let's continue with the book of Revelation. And we have um, last time uh, discussed the last part of Revelation chapter 10 about the um, John who digests the word of God. And it is uh, beginning sweet to him. It shall be then a mouth sweet as honey, but it shall be make thy belly bitter. And um, we talked about that. Now, then in chapter 11, uh, we're going to talk about the second coming of Moses and Elijah. And um, we already went through some of the material there. And um, let's read a few more verses in chapter 11, verse 1. It was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angels stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of, the, of God in the altar, and then that worship therein. But the court which is without a temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. In the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's three and a half years, uh, gentle occupation of Jerusalem. And uh, that is then connected with the um, second part of the Great Tribulation. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. That's the first half of the Tribulation. We'll explain why that is in a minute. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. If any man will hurt them, then he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven and that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues often as they will. Now, <clears throat> that is um, what we already discussed, and uh, uh, we want to talk a little bit also why this is not a reference to Henoch as one of the two witnesses. Uh, first of all, we read in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5 and verse 6, that Bo Moses did not stay that. Deuteronomy 34, verse 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of a sepulcher until this day. <laughs> now, why is that? Now, if you go to the New Testament and you read Jude 9, it becomes clear where nobody has found that sepulcher. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. There is not bringing against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So there was a fight over the body of Moses. Now the body of Moses shows up again in the New Testament in um, Matthew chapter uh, 17, I think. Matthew chapter 17. And there we read in verses, um, the first uh, 13 verses about the uh, transfiguration of Jesus Christ and um, that Jesus Christ speaks with um, Moses and Elias and um, then you can say that Moses was allowed to come into the land if that's the a mountain in the land of um, which may not be it may be there the uh, Mount Sinai um, uh, but he's bodily uh, appearing there with Jesus Christ and Elijah, who never died, who will die in the future. Now, Elijah is not John the Baptist, although he came in the spirit and power of John the Baptist. 
and John the Baptist dies being beheaded by Herod, a type of the Antichrist, as same as Elijah will um, die at the second, uh, just before the second coming, um, when he is becoming beheaded by the man of sin coming out of the abyss. Um, look at Matthew chapter 17, verse um, 9 to 11. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, One then uh, say, Describe that Elias must first come. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, and have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. <coughs> And Elias came already. Now, how can that come when John the Baptist is not Elias? Look at uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 18 to 20. It came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him and asked them, saying, Whom say this people that I am? Then answering said John the Baptist. But some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answering said, That Christ of God. So people thought that he was Elias or John the Baptist. These two were connected with their plain, because of the plain rough preaching with Jesus Christ. Now look at um, a little further in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. And this is the record that John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What well, then art thou, Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. So he says, I'm not Elias. And yet there is no um, contradiction here. If you look at... Uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he was not Elias, but he went in the spirit and power of Elias. And what Elias will do, according to Malachi 4 and Revelation chapter uh, 11 here, he'll preach to prepare a people for the Lord who turn and accept Jesus as the Messiah. And that remnant, that is the remnant, will, will be saved. Uh, and Sila Petra. So John... Could have been Elijah when Israel would have repented uh, in Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, which it didn't. So you see there's a lot of similarities between the first coming of Jesus Christ and the second coming of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 7. Uh, you had him here, and here you have a second chance of the Jews as a nation, Acts 2 to 7, and they don't uh, take that. And here uh, the, uh, the leader sent a message, uh, the martyr Stephen, back to God and with a message, we don't want this Jesus reign over you. And Jesus Christ stands here at the right hand of the Father as the Son of Man, not the Son of God, Son of Man. Son of Man is always connected with the Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of Heaven is gone and comes back here at the second coming of Jesus Christ after Moses and Elijah preach here for three and a half years and be killed um, and then be risen from the dead. They'd be raptured out of here. And then there's a remnant and that remnant it's a part of it is Captain Sila Petra, a, a part of it, 144,000 will be preaching here again, and they'll be raptured here as well. Uh, and then they come back with the Lord here at the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's where the kingdom of heaven comes down, and that's where the, end, the, the number of the Gentiles will end. That's the, the three and a half years, the last three and a half years, which Jerusalem is run by the Gentiles. And the number of the Gentiles will end there. Now look at uh, Matthew chapter... 10 verse 23 when they persecute you in this city flee ye into another so in Jerusalem flee ye into another city but verily I say unto you ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come the Son of Man is a reference here to the second coming of Jesus Christ so they'll be hunted down like in a holocaust as um, and then this is a, the context of preachers so this is a context of um, uh, Jewish uh, males who preach the gospel of the kingdom there 
and Paul's conversion is, I, is basically a man born uh, without uh, time, um, uh, outside of the time, so to say, where he should be born in. And he's a type, he could have been a type of a tribulation saint who never married one of the 144,000 Jewish male virgins. Now, in uh, the last <coughs> book of the Old Testament, in Malachi chapter 4, we read, we see these two men coming up again. And in Malachi chapter 4, verse 4, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. So probably that mount of the transfiguration where Jesus Christ was transfigured uh, may have been Horeb. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that's Elijah showing up. And he comes before that day. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers as I come and smite the earth with a curse. And of course, uh, John get, gets beheaded and Elijah will get beheaded as well. Um, again, um, in uh, Luke chapter 1, where we talk about in verse 17 that um, John the Baptist wasn't Elijah, he comes in the spirit and power of Elijah. All heresies start uh, when you start here in Acts 1 and 2 and take it to doctrinal statement and apply that to the church age. Uh, again, it may work as long as you see a doctrinal statement here, which is backed up by something here. But this is where you start. This is the, the time of um, the church where you start with a sound doctrinal uh, statement. And whenever something in X2, 3, 4, 5, 6 doctrinally is, in, is uh, in agreement with that doctrinal statement here, you can take it. If not, you have to put it as a transitional thing not doctrinally applicable to the church age. Now, there are some uh, similarities between Moses, Elijah, and Jesus Christ. Uh, they both are uh, on Mount Sinai, on Mount Horeb. They both are there 40 days and 40 nights, although Moses is there twice, uh, 40 days and 40 nights, fasting, praying. They both cross the Jordan River. They both have a successor, Jesus Christ, as Paul, Moses, as Joshua, Elijah, as Elijah. Uh, both do signs and wonders, and Moses stands before Pharaoh, Elijah stands for Ahab, who is the type of the Antichrist, and married a witch Jezebel from um, Tyrus and Senate, Phoenician woman. And Paul stands before Nero, who has the office of the Pontifex Maximus, the Babylonian mystery religion, and who is the man of sin in these days. And um, that office will be filled by another, the last pope in the last uh, days after the rapture. He will be killed, resurrected from the dead, according to Zechariah 11, um, uh, 17. And then uh, he will be the one killing Moses and Elijah after the first three and a half years. So there is the problem of what we call a time element between the first and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, that's the reason why if you have a prophet here, he sees 50 prophe prophecies here about the first coming. He sees about 500 or so second coming. And again, the big theme is always a kingdom and a king and a throne. Uh, first the kingdom comes, sorry, the king comes, the king brings in a kingdom with military violence and then sits upon the throne and there will be peace there. That's how it will appear. And uh, the trouble of the Jews has always been that there are ten as times as much references about the second coming as the first coming of Jesus Christ. So a prophet sees only about 50 here, about 500 there. And of course, since uh, human beings are uh, un they're always uh, thinking positive, uh, they always take the things which are interested for them and they miss uh, the prophecies about the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, look at um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, that's here, and the glory that should follow, and that's here. And between that you have uh, 2,000 years of church age, a tribulation, a great tribulation, and, uh, and then you have that um, uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So the mistake of the Jews is that they think first coming and second coming have, should occur at the same time. You see it in Luke chapter 24. 
And um, you know, all these disciples with whom Jesus talked to Emma said, well, we've been uh, very disappointed. We thought he would be the king of the Jews and he would uh, redeem Israel, meaning uh, get Israel away from a foreign occupation power, which was the Roman uh, uh, Empire. And they mixed them, first and second coming. And the Lord is uh, angry with them and said, oh, you foolish of heart, should not the Christ come first and suffer these things? So God's answer is the New Testament. And the Jews reject that. 99% uh, of all Jews reject the New Testament as being given by God and revealing Jesus as the Messiah who already has come. And then, of course, for the Christians, they make the mistake. They spiritualize the second coming of Jesus Christ, including 500 prophecies, and God's answer is the Old Testament. Because most Christians are only interested in salvation and what it has for them. And they forget that the whole Old Testament is given to Jews uh, about a Jewish king and a Jewish uh, kingdom coming, uh, where a Jewish king sits on the throne in a literal, visible uh, Jewish city, Jerusalem. They miss that completely. So most Christians spiritualize the Old Testament. So then you come to the point of the seven sevens. Um, uh, Second Peter 3 says, one day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. When Jesus Christ could come back in Acts chapter 7, he had the 7,000 years. You have Adam, uh, 4,004 before Christ, to the second Adam, and then you had 2,000 years church age, a short time of tribulation, and the second come is the seventh day, seventh millennium. But, you say, if you would to come here, it still would work, because then you have here the time between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2, the fall of Lucifer, uh, Genesis 1, 2, that should have been 2,000 years, Plus four is 6,000, that'd be the 7,000. Then be the ninth, and the ninth, nine is the number of fruitfulness. So it will still work. Uh, we see in Acts chapter 8, a Hamite comes from Ethiopia to the temple to worship the God of the Jews and uh, reads Isaiah. The Gentiles come to Jerusalem in the millennial reign to worship the God of the Jews. Um, look at um, Isaiah chapter... Uh, a few references here. I start with 11. Uh, Isaiah 11, verse 10. And in the day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. And to it shall the Gentile seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Uh, Isaiah 49, verse 7. The say the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to whom man despiseth uh, to whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and rise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3, 5, and 16. The Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Verse 5. Then, shall thou, uh, then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Verse 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. So here you see the Gentiles coming to the God of the Jews. And these, these uh, Gentiles will be redeemed. Look at um, Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit, because they worshipped since Nimrod, the sons of God, the God of this world, and not the living God. So we see that the uh, secret of the church is revealed to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2 and 3, and that uh, mystery of the church is not revealed to James and Peter in Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It came after Acts 8, 9, after Saul gets saved and gets a revelation directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why you can also say in Acts 2, 38, uh, what Paul preached there is not the gospel which Paul preached whereby you and I are saved. It says here in Acts 2, 38, repent, that means repent the Jews, not the Gentiles. The Jews had to repent of killing their messiahs, be baptized in the name of Jesus, a Jewish baptism, and they should get the Holy Ghost. That's not how you get the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost because you believed 
alone, not works, on the Lord Jesus Christ, a person. And that's how you got saved. And then you should be baptized by immersion in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's a different baptism formula, although that water baptism has nothing to do with your salvation. So what's very important is uh, um, you have to learn to rightly divide the word of truth. And it's only possible if a Christian spends time in the book studying it instead of reading the newspaper over the Bible. And a good Christian changes his uh, system according to the scripture. No matter what it is, you have to change your ideas according to what God says. And most schools today are post millennial and they just interpret the scripture according to their system. And, and that's wrong. That's what the JWs do too. Um, and what uh, God needs uh, for a man is a humble mind and a believing heart. And if you have a believing heart and a humble mind, which is ready, to, uh, willing to be instructed and corrected by the book, God can uh, reveal you all kinds of stuff He hasn't revealed to nobody else. And it's not from a Greek or Hebrew text, it's straight from a King James Bible. Now, Revelation chapter 11. We saw already that Revelation 11 here opens up the Old Testament. It shows you Moses and Elijah and all the stuff connected with that. It's a type of what will happen here where they uh, are both used to prepare the Jewish people, the chosen people of God, to receive the Messiah, and then comes peace on earth. That's what the United Nations, the League of Nations, the United European Union always wanted. And the Old Testament, if you understand that, opens up the New Testament. You see that the Old Testament here, and then it continues here, uh, is just the New Testament, just a, a short break in the Old Testament sequence of the kingdom of heaven connected with the king, a kingdom, and a throne. So Matthew is a transitional book between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, the book of uh, Acts is a transitional book where God first deals with the Jews and then with the Gentiles. First you have Paul, the first 10, 11 chapters. Uh, he's the apostle to the circumcision, the Jews. And later you see Paul being the preeminent person, the apostle to the Gentiles, Acts 13 to 28. And then you have Hebrew. Hebrew is a transitional book um, where Hebrews, where God deals, <coughs> starts from the church and dealing with the Jewish nation again, including James. Now in Revelation 11, 2 to 6, you have the two witnesses, and they're Moses and Elijah. They're not um, uh, Mohammed or Joe Smith or Enoch or anybody else. We read in um, Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And the dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, <clears throat> here is um, these two men have their testimony finished after three and a half years. That beast comes up out of the bottomless pit. So the last uh, pope in the office of the man of sin gets killed. The church of Rome gets destroyed by the ten kings. He comes out of the bottomless pit. Um, uh, with the spirit of Judas Iscariot in the body of the last pope, and uh, these two men will be killed. They'll be beheaded, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now, what city is that? That's where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. It's not New York. It's not Babylon. Um, it's it's um, Jerusalem. Uh, spiritually, it's a very wicked city, and the reason why Sodom is mentioned there is that um, the last man of sin will be a sex pervert ruling the United Nations from this city during the tribulation. Um, he has no interest in the love of women, Daniel eleven thirty six, And he is the man of sin, comma, after he's killed, he rises from the dead. He's called the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. Uh, Egypt, because the Antichrist ruling the world, and Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a, is a title. And the title of uh, the king of Egypt is Pharaoh. And he is called uh, a dragon. In, uh, I think, Isaiah 27 or Ezekiel 27, 28. Now, that beast uh, is a reference to a man. And it's not the resurrected Roman Empire. Now, European Union comes up, the euro will come up, and the American dollar and the United States of America will go down. And that's clearly said in Daniel 7. You have there these uh, four beasts. The first three are 
uh, historical types of media Persia, Greece and Rome. And these are types of, you can see types in the Church Age of uh, media Persia, England, Greece, Russia, and then that third B, the type of uh, Roman type of the United States of America. They both have Horus, the eagle. And then there comes the fourth empire with iron teeth. And that's that uh, same iron as given in Daniel chapter 2 with the ten toes where iron mixed with clay. And it says they will not mix with the seed of a man. That's something supernatural, something alien from outer space, so to say. It is connected with the fallen sons of God in Daniel in Genesis chapter 6. And that will, that American Empire will be part of a world empire of ten demoniac, uh, half man, half something outer space kings. And they will rule in this time, but it will come up already here at the end of the church age. Um, now that re re reconstructed Roman Empire doesn't come from the abyss. Um, uh, it's not in Europe. Uh, Revelation 13, 18 is very important. Uh, it's Amen. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, a specific man, and his number is 603 score and 6. So you talk about a specific man, a beast. It's not a human being. It's a beast. Never forget, the devil is a beast. He's a cherub. He's not a human soul. He has no human soul. He's a beast. That's why this whole thing of evolution, the idea of we coming from animals, and that's why we have behaved of animals, and all our laws have to be adjusted to a jungle uh, idea of the survival of the fittest, is perfectly in agreement with this mentality of the man of sin who is a beast. And... Um, that beast comes up, and he is the one who, in, who starts that kingdom. So this beast now, this man of sin, comes up connected with Rome, and his purpose is to inherit a kingdom connected with a throne. The throne will be from where he now is, the ex-cathedral Rome, that will be burned down here by the Ten Kings, and then at the first half of the tribulation there, goes to Babylon, where the whole mess started. When Babylon gets burned with fire, Revelation chapter 18, he goes to Jerusalem, puts his throne right there, and destroys Jerusalem. Although already he put an image in the temple uh, in that time, uh, after he kills uh, Moses and Elijah in the first half of the great of the tribulation there. Um, it's very important. First comes their king, and then comes a kingdom. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Verse 23 to 25. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, and not by, uh, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people connected with the Jews. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also send up against the prince of princes, the Jesus Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. That's here when he's broken without hand by Armageddon with the breath of the mouth of Jesus Christ and be beheaded. Now this being comes from the abyss and uh, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, we read that uh, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is in the Hebrew tongue Abaddon and the Greek tongue Apollyon, the destroyer. Uh, the Terminator. And he's a king. Jesus Christ is a king, so this being is an imitator, he also be a king. Revelation 17, verse 8. Now there we see that the, on the moment John writes, the angel said, uh, the beast that thou sawest was, he was there in the time of John when Judas Iscariot was a devil, according to John 6, 70, um, was with Jesus Christ for three and a half years, is not, on the moment of writing 96 AD, that Judas Iscariot is not on this earth, he is in the abyss, he went to his own place, Acts 125, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. He comes back, when? After the rapture of the church here. And go into perdition. And they that dwell, that's right here, when he gets his head cut off. That's why it's called the son of perdition. His... Uh, his destiny is fixed. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, 17, 8. 
And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, uh, 33 AD, is not, 96 AD, and yet is. And he writes here from this point on, the is. He sees that beast coming there and being active. Now that word is uh, Apollo, Apollyon, uh, and it's written, it's a Greek word, and it's um, called as, uh, translated as the son of perdition, perdition in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. And again, that Antichrist is, will sit in a literal, physical temple in Jerusalem. That's where the whole Freemason idea is set up, Freemasonry, rebuilding the temple. And that's what the Jesuits plan to do, to rebuild the temple for their uh, man they want to have the whole world to worship. The man of sin, and they will make it. They're a very powerful order, and they will be able to do it. Now, <clears throat> this um, uh, is like a, a, um, an anointed cherub, according to Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight, fourteen. He's an anointed cherub. He's not a angel. He's not a fallen angel. He's not a human soul. He's a cherub, and an anointed cherub. He was the most beautiful being before Genesis one two. He was a choir director. There was no more beautiful creature than he. And this is a, the, the false Christ, the false anointed one. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we read that the Jews, they look for a sign, according to 1 Corinthians 1. And what does it creature do? He knows it, and he is going to deceive the nation of the Jews with false signs and wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Lying wonders. Oh yeah, they're God can the devil can do wonders, but they're lying. Their purpose is to deceive. And he's called that uh, the the lost child or the son of perdition in John chapter uh, seventeen verse twelve, referring to Judas Iscariot. Now this person has betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. I look at Zechariah chapter eleven verse twelve and thirteen. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me prize, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my prize thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast into the father a goodly prayer that was praised at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. And that's the prize the Lord was betrayed for by Judas Iscariot. Now in that same context, a little further, we read in verse 15, And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee the instruments of, the, of a foolish shepherd. And that's the pole, by the way. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. God raises him up. Like he rose up uh, uh, Pharaoh. Uh, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the, flat, the fat, and tear the clutter claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd. Well, it's very advanced revelation here. That comes from, the, from Luther, by the way. He had it in German, the Götzenhirte, Götzen, uh, idol, shepherd. Uh, the word shepherd is the word uh, pater, papa, uh, pope. That leaveth the flock, the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arms shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. So you see in this modern pop music, Hollywood business, always people covering their right eye. And he has a bad right arm. Uh, Wilhelm II had that, the guy who betrayed the German Empire, the Second German Empire. Uh, to the Jesuits, um, it was a night in Malta. Uh, he says Hitler had a bad right arm, Napoleon had a bad right arm. There, there were two men, uh, Hitler's Nazi party number was 555, Napoleon, I think, number is 444. Both were run by the Jesuits for the pur purpose of destroying Europe, unifying Europe under the Jesuits, indirectly the menacing. So he comes from the Roman Church, um, that uh, he's a Baal's worshiper. Um, Jezebel and Achab are uh, a type of that uh, false church. The gay spirit of Jezebel is today under the churches where females run males, families, churches. Uh, and again, uh, no big system from the God of this world makes that mistake, not in Islam, not in communism, not in Catholicism, not in none of these three systems as any female running anything, because they're, they're, they're made as helpers, not as leaders. And Judas Iscariot's uh, spirit uh, comes back. 
Jesus Christ calls him a devil in John 6 verse 70. He comes from the abyss where he is now and he's a king. And he is Ascaean who was from the evil one in 1 John 3 12. So that refers that he may be connected with the seed of the devil. So Jesus Christ had a human father, uh, possibly Simon, uh, Ascaean, and he was not a human being. Uh, the same as the angels, the fallen sons of God in Genesis chapter 6, and they could die as men after they take blood orally in Psalm 85. We read in um, Hebrews 13, 2, that some of them have shown hospitality and um, took angels in their houses. So these angels are like 33 and a half young men. Uh, this man, Judas Iscariot, went to his own place in Acts 1, 25, the abyss. And again, you have an imitation of the true unity, God Father, God Son, God Holy Spirit. You have a uh, satanic trinity, uh, the body of the Pope, the devil, the soul of the devil, and the spirit of Judas Iscariot is an unholy trinity. It's a type of um, uh, Baal and Balak and Biliam, uh, the false prophet, the false king, the false god. And you see the same thing coming up in the near future. And they will have a holocaust, a uh, Latin work for burnt offering, of Jewish people to themselves. Uh, Moses and Elijah are witnesses uh, against the Antichrist. Uh, Moses and Aaron were witnesses against Pharaoh. Elijah and Elijah were witnesses against Ahab. And uh, again, that's what happens again in the near future. Okay, I think that's it for so far. Uh, we'll take a break here and then continue next time.